Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegGamers.com video, we're going to be discussing three tech news stories which are currently doing the rounds over the past 24 or so hours. The first of which is a Vega benchmark, which reports that Vega, which of course is AMD's upcoming graphics card, is a huge amount faster than NVIDIA's Pascal, although it's looking like these benchmarks are completely fake, but I do want to bring people's attention to it because some folks are messaging me asking my opinion on the benchmark, so figure I'll throw it in here. But the real crux of the news really comes to us from Intel. There are two news stories which are very much of interest, the first of which is Coffee Lake and a possible delay until 2018, ouch. And the second is their upcoming Skylake X platform. So Socket 2066 might well be seeing a version 2 in order to fully support 14, 16 and 18 core SKUs. We'll get into that last. So first things first, let's discuss the Vega rumour. I don't want to give this one too much attention because... Well, it's most likely almost certainly fake, but essentially there was a benchmark which popped up on the internet. It actually originated a couple of weeks back, but then it started to pick up momentum again. And as I said, a number of you have messaged me asking my opinion on this. And as far as I understand it from the due diligence that I've done and also um, doing some reading on the internet, this benchmark is pretty much fake. But anyway, I'll go through the very, you know, gist of it. Essentially, it's showing Doom... Vulcan at 4K Ultra, a TSAA um, times 8, and this is comparing it against a Titan XP as well as a GTX 1080. The results speak for themselves, 142 frames per second on Vega, Titan XP is getting 117, and finally a 1080 is getting around 62. Obviously the latter two results, the Titan and the GTX 1080 are pretty, you know, pretty okay. Obviously, it does depend on the rest of your system. If you're trying to run this on, like, you know, an E4300, probably not going to get these results. But generally, if you've got a pretty good CPU, this is roughly what you're going to get with those cards. With Vega, of course, we just don't know the performance. Now, obviously, if Titan... I'm sorry, if Vega does end up being faster than Titan, then we might actually see these type of results in reality. But it is looking like these results are fake. Unfortunately... It's incredibly hard to pinpoint certain fakes or certain real, real benchmarks, especially when it comes to GPUs, especially if they don't have an online database. If you have an online database, for example, Geekbench or whatever, then you can do some due diligence and most likely find a reference which tells you, okay, this is the original result and here's what it's been altered to, or hey, this is actually a legitimate result. When it comes to results like this, though, it's a lot harder. And we don't know if Bob in China obviously I'm being a bit sarcastic, and she does have a Vega graphics card or not, and has done some testing. It's making it even more tricky because AMD have been really, really holding back on any solid numbers, and even during Computex, they showed off, um, they showed off uh, Prey, but there was no frame rate indicator. So it's like, what does the card really do? Well, some people are taking it at the Vega is a disappointment and isn't going to perform as well as what was advertised. Others are saying, well, no, it's because it's still being optimized. Therefore, why would they give, you know, incorrect impressions of the hardware when they're still working in the drivers, which, to be honest, is fair enough. And the third, and uh, also as logical, why would they give NVIDIA a heads up or anyone a heads up on the performance of the card until basically no one can do anything about it? So it's up to you who you believe. But, well, there you go. So, as I said, I'm pretty sure this is fake, but, well, there you go. Since Ryzen's release, I've been talking muchly about Coffee Lake, which, of course, is the next generation, or at least it was the next generation, of Intel mainstream processors. So, currently, we are on Kaby Lake, which is, which is the sixth, seventh generation, excuse me. Previous to that, we were on Sky Lake, which was, of course, the sixth generation, so... Guess what that one mean? Guess what that means? That's right. It was the eighth generation, and it was touted to launch in the second half of 2017, according to all of Intel's roadmaps. Well, according to a few websites, the first one which broke the story, as far as I'm aware, was WinFuture.de. Intel have had to tell its partners, which of course are motherboard vendors and so on and so on, that there's going to be a delay and it's not going to actually appear until 2018. So basically, the 8th generation gets to become a KB Lake refresh this year. Obviously, that sucks for anyone who didn't necessarily need 
the number of cores that, that say, a Ryzen 7 brings, but instead wants a CPU which is more clock speed sensitive. Presumably, we will see Coffee Lake, assuming all of the early indications, the roadmaps, the leaks, and all that stuff is accurate, it will basically see a the usual and traditional um, generational bumps. So, in theory at least, it will be a nice CPU, and the fact that Intel are finally moving to a 6-core, 12-thread model is a definitely a win. I wouldn't be surprised if some of this is down to manufacturing, but I also wouldn't be surprised if some of it isn't. I wouldn't be surprised if some of it is because Intel are also releasing their Skylake X range of processors, and... And though I've been fairly vocal on it, many of you have also said exactly the same thing. And that's just like, well, okay, you're releasing the 7740 on, you know, the X299 platform, but not too shortly, not too long after that, basically within the same window, essentially, you're then releasing Coffee Lake. And it's just like, that doesn't make any sense. You have Coffee Lake, which has more cores available, more threads available, presumably higher level of performance on the mainstream than what you do the X299 platform. It's just, it's just a bit bonkers. And I don't know, you know, if that had anything to do with it or not, but there you go. So it looks like we're going to be seeing a Coffee Lake uh, refresh instead this year. And these new 15 watt cable egg u parts will double the core count from two to four and of course this is more for ultra books than anything else so from what i can tell anyway if you're a desktop owner um well yeah pretty much it sucks to be you okay so we all know that intel were most likely in a bit of a panic when fred ripper was first rumored let alone announced like Announcements are very different from a rumor, as we all know, because AMD, even if Intel did have industry sources inside AMD, plonked in there and told them, yes, this is what the company are planning, it's very different from a public formal announcement. And of course, Fred Ripper is essentially aiming to release this summer, which is pretty much within the same time window as X299, give or take a little bit. So it wasn't really surprising, but also a bit concerning that Intel decided last minute to increase the core count for the X299 platform to 14, 16, and 18 cores. Now, 18 cores is definitely higher than the X399, also known as Threadripper, but we quickly heard that there were problems um, with Intel and that they might have to delay the chips until 2018. Well, it was a bit weird because it's basically just cut down Xenons. So we weren't sure if they were just kind of not really sure what to do, whether it was just, you know, they needed time to ramp up production. Maybe they hadn't even started to do the design of the chips. Well, but a website by the name of bitsandchips.it have sources. And those sources, which obviously I can't validate, that's the problem with sources who are anonymous, have stated that there will be a new socket required Oh god, Intel, please don't be another socket. This is going to be much like socket 11 to 11. Uh, 11v3, excuse me. And the reason behind this, uh, according to this website, is that, well, basically, the original socket 2066 was only designed to support 10 or even 12 cores, not 18 plus. So basically, you have a TDP. Um, which is possibly going to be 200 watts or more, and basically, to run those clock speeds, you know, you're going to require extra voltage, and basically, uh, I guess the best way of putting it is the boards themselves, the actual architecture was not designed to handle these frequencies, this level of performance. So, basically, what you're getting is, according to this website anyway, the possibility that if they have to release these chips, you might only get about 2.5 gigahertz across all cores. Now, I don't care who you are. If you've got 18 cores at just 2.5 gigahertz, sure, some tasks are going to run better than, let's say, an 8-core CPU, which is running at 3.8 gigahertz. But that's not many applications, really. Not that many applications are super multi-thread. And even if you're buying this for, like, virtual machine work, I think most folks would agree it's better to go with, like, 10 cores, which are running at, like, 4 gigahertz or 4.2 gigahertz or something like that. So if this rumor is accurate, it's going to put Intel in a very strange position. And according to this website, at least in their opinion, this is the reasons why we're seeing the uh, 14, 16, and 18 core SKUs being released in around six-ish months time. And I was 
some point late next year or uh, sorry later very late this year or early next year most likely early next year according to uh, what well even asus themselves on their website it's all a bit weird so unfortunately we can't verify this yet and i don't think intel's going to go on record and say gee this is exactly the reason sorry about that so unfortunately as usual with most of these rumors we can only wait and see with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff. If you liked it, well, you know, like the video. Subscribe if you've not, and I shall see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.